pretty sure this is the first day I've been on the trail and hiking at exactly 6 a.m. Every day I try, but it usually takes me a good extra 10 minutes. Uh, today is supposed to be sunny all day with a chance of thunderstorms starting at 3. Yesterday that was at 4. And now that I'm out walking, I can see that the sky already looks stormy and I can smell rain. So I'm not sure how good that forecast was. I had to pull it from my inReach because I have no cell service here, which is also probably the reason why I got out of camp at 6 a.m. this morning. Um, hope it's a good day. I'm gonna make it a good day. Well, it's 7.30 now and the moody skies have moved out and now it's a beautiful blue sky with some soft white clouds, full sunshine. Um, so I think we're gonna be good for most of the day up until about three. We'll see how that goes. Everything's coming along fine. The trail's been pretty gentle so far. Not pushing any kind of pace. My goal today is pretty much a solid 16 miles. That puts me right up against a big climb. Um, I have to double check again, but I don't even think that there was like camping for four miles, which would put me at 20 for the day. And I really don't want to do that unless this day is just like super easy. Look at this beauteous camping area. Nice, nice, nice. All right, we're going to Spy Rock for our early morning snack break. I just passed a small group of day hikers that were probably in their mid-twenties. And the last guy was carrying a big old trash bag, picking up trash. See, there's still hope in this world. Just left the priest shelter, making my way up to the summit of the priest. The log book there was pretty cool. It was a confessions book. So everybody put their confessions into the log. And it was fun reading them. Uh, Sparks, Church Mouse, and Stealth were here two days ago and they confessed to sometimes judging other people who don't take 
each and every step of the AT and they might stray off and do a shortcut or something. <laughs> that was cute. And uh, my entry was that, forgive me father for I have sinned. I tend to pee wherever I want and sometimes I forget that I need to be careful about that when I get back to civilization. <laughs> there was also a father-daughter combo doing their first ever backpack out here. Um, the father was 71, so I'm imagining that his daughter was somewhere in her 50s. Um, he lost his son recently and he and his son were supposed to do the AT together. So the daughter decided to go out with him um, for three days and see how it went. Um, I don't think she's liking it very much, but that's just my opinion. I didn't have a chance to talk with her. It was kind of from what the father said. Um, but they've got a very steep drop coming up and uh, I hope that they're okay on it. I did get a chance to get the actual AT weather with a little bit of cell service that I had there and they are now saying that the thunderstorms are supposed to start at two o'clock. So two to three thunderstorms and then three to four more thunderstorms and then five to six, another round of thunderstorms apparently. So we're gonna see how quickly we can get to camp, but I'm almost certain that I'm only going 16 miles today. couple days. Unlike some of the really crisp clear days we've had, but still nice views. There's been some really pretty campsites lately. Okay, I'm about to start a five mile, 3,200 foot descent. Hoping it's not gonna be rocky and that it's a fairly gradual thing, but it doesn't really look like that. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to put up a little picture here from my Far Out app to show you the drastic drop in elevation. Um, at the bottom, there's gonna be a very short little uphill that I'll have to do to get to my campsite. I think maybe two miles uphill, but it doesn't seem as bad. Um, so I think I've got about seven miles left for the day. Um, and I'm not exactly sure of what time it is, but it's probably somewhere between 11 and 12. So hopefully, I can dodge these thunderstorms until I can get my tent set up. We'll see. Right. Just met this fine fellow coming uh, sobo up the trail as I'm heading down the very steep priest. And it turns out that one of my very special friends and him know each other. So, OT, I'm gonna let you take it away. <laughs> hey, gravity. <laughs> I couldn't believe that I run into this young lady on trail. I was wondering if I was gonna see anybody that I know, so. It's close enough, right? <laughs> exactly, wish you were here. So, gravity, he told me that um, he hiked with you and Topo for a long time. Yes. Do you know how many miles? No idea. It was a long time. Days? <laughs> Weeks? Weeks? Months? Months? <laughs> it, it was a long time. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, he was just giving me the greatest pep talk. So thank you very much, OT. Hey, God bless. <laughs> You're never too old to be out here. Turned 69 last week. That's right. Tell him all the stuff you've done since the AT and how you started on the AT. I started the AT. I'd never done an overnight backpacking trip. Didn't even have a backpack. That was 2016, 2017. I bicycled across America, 5,000 miles coast to coast. 18, I did the PCT, Mexico to Canada. 19, the Camino in Europe. 21, the Great Divide, Mexico to Canada. Last year, I kayaked the Missouri River, Montana to St. Louis, 2,400 miles. That's so excellent. You have any big adventures in store for this year? Um, I'm actually going to tour the West with my wife this year, but it's going to be a driving tour. Good, good. Um, considering maybe doing the AT again next year. For oh my, my gosh. <laughs> well, that is a good reason. Well, I hope that you do it and you have great success. It was wonderful meeting you, OT. Nice to meet you too. Bye. God bless. God bless. The descent has not been bad at all. Yes, there are rocks on the trail, but they're really not that bad. You can hop around them. I'm trying to go a little bit faster because I believe that the when you kind of break on the downhill, it actually does more damage to your joints, that jarring feeling. So I'm trying to go with the flow, so to speak, the, the inertia of falling but not falling if that makes any sense um and i kind of like going faster um it just it's a little more fun it's tiring in its own right because you have to really concentrate which means that i'm gonna stop videoing very soon because now the trail is getting a little rockier but um this descent is going pretty well i think i've got one of five miles done. Okay. Okay, I can hear the stream, Cripple Creek, that I plan on stopping at for lunch. So I'm getting close. I just wanna add and let you all know, the forest smells so good today. There are so many new scents and smells and mm, it just smells so good. Flowers, greenery, trees, everything, probably pollen. I have no idea but it is delicious. <laughs> This is a ring snake, little tiny guy.
Just finished up lunch at Cripple Creek. It was great. Um, it's not gonna be much longer before it's gonna be impossible to hang out around water for fear of getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. Um, and Lexicon came by and he's pushing on over three ridges today. But I looked at the map, I just can't do it. It's 10 more miles from here and I've already gone uh, uh, 12 miles. So I'm just, I'm not even thinking about it. Uh, hopefully, I only have four miles left for the day and it's a little after one, I think 1.30. So I have a good chance of getting to camp before the rain starts, if it's gonna start. And I'll be all safe and tucked away if there's thunderstorms or if there's not, it's just gonna be a, early day. Uh, there's just nothing in between the camp area, which is just below a shelter, and then the next shelter on the other side of the ridge. So I get an easy day and it's probably a good thing. So I'm just going to take it. Uh, also, Lexicon did tell me that um, Oz has had a brain injury, so that's why he is the way he is. And I have to say, I kind of had a sixth sense about it. Um, I just felt like um, I had to be extra nice to him and just tolerate him. And now I have an explanation for what it is that makes him unique. Um, I guess he got it in the military. Um, he was in the Canadian Navy and he did rattle off a bunch of other places. He did actually do a little stint in the United States. I don't know how that all worked, but anyways, that's Oz's story. Um, he's a good guy. He's harmless. He's just a little interesting. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure that He'll be heading up towards where I'm camping tonight. Um, and I think pretty much all the characters from yesterday are gonna probably be stopping there. Um, it's gonna be about a 14 mile day for them because I camped two, uh, two miles before the last shelter. Um, so it'll be nice to see Poppins and uh, Wiley again. I like those two. and I felt a big fat raindrop on the back of my neck but it hasn't started raining yet the air is just super super thick uh, feels like a summer day I'm not complaining I'll take it and I'm gonna get to camp early set my tent up and have a nice night. All right, I think, I think I just heard a little bit of thunder. I'm close to a road, so could have been a truck or something. Um, I'm gonna put my ear pods in with some dance music because the next two and a half miles is all uphill. And at this point, I just felt another raindrop on my shoulder. I just wanna get there, another one on my arm. It's coming, things are getting dark. So we're just gonna grind this last two and a half out and get there since we know we're not going any further. Okay, we'll see you at camp. All right, here it comes. <laughs> it's gonna pour, I can feel it.
Okay, I have got one mile to go. And I have chosen not to put any rain gear on. It was so muggy and warm. This rain actually feels really refreshing, but I'm still not going beyond this campsite. Just point eight to go. Or I could take a shortcut and get over the mountain range in three miles. And sticking with the AT. Just got water at this lovely water source. And now the campsites are just up the hill. Okay, I'm at the campsite and I found a spot tucked up in the back, just the way I like it. Looks flat to me. I don't think there's any heavy rain coming. I think it's actually a pretty minimal amount of rainfall during this rain, so I think I'm gonna be okay here. Um, if it pours though, that could pull up. So let's hope the forecast is right. This is where I'm gonna set up. Kind of excited about it. It's pretty secluded. Um, even if other people show up, I don't think they're gonna come up close to me. They'll probably take one of the sites closer to the trail, which is why I moseyed on up here. More stealth-like. <laughs> hey everybody, look who found me. Oz, it's Oz. This, this, look at this body for you. I brought for you to look at and gaze upon. I'm okay, Angela. ladies. <laughs> Enjoy. Ladies, there's your boy for the next week. <laughs> so you tried last year and got how far? Uh, Glasgow. So I'm newbie right now. So you're starting to go all the way to Maine? Mm -hmm. Are you still? You're one of us. Welcome. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Hand Blaze. Hand blaze. He all the blazes on the trees. Yeah. With gratitude. That's why I can keep up to Absolutely. him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sunkissed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I saw your priest thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I saw both of y'all. Are you like mine? What did you well, I guess my campsite isn't so stealthy after all since Oz found me. That's okay. Um, the other guy that was with him is actually Smile's brother, which is very cool. Um, so he had to get off trail in Ga Glasgow last year, and he is back on trail and going from Glasgow to Maine. Hope to see him again. He seems like a good dude. All right, I am in. Got my tent set up. Um gonna climb in there and settle in for the evening. 
Um, not too bad as far as getting here early. It's only four o'clock, so I'm not feeling like I'm missing too much of the day hiking. Um, just gonna pick back up where I left off tomorrow. I guess it's supposed to be cloudy according to Oz. I'll be checking the forecast myself to verify that. I'll take cloudy over rain any day. My mileage today is 15.98. So I think it's safe to say 16 miles. And I got here at, I think it was like 3.45, 4 o'clock. So I don't feel too bad about um, not having gone far farther. Um, I didn't lose out on too many uh, hiking hours and I'm sure it was best for, I'm sure my body's happy about this. Um, I do have to admit that I was in a bit of a funk today, feeling like I was boxed in at staying here because um, it's a pretty big camping area. Um, but the rain, I think, has definitely pushed everybody up to the shelter and no one else is down here yet and it's uh, 5.30 now. Um, doesn't mean that people are still not going to stroll in, uh, but uh, I like the, the isolation for now. Um, I really, I would have liked to have gone a couple miles further, but... I just don't know what is up there for camping and I definitely would have had to have carried water and is going up to a ridge and I think we know the song and how the story goes when it comes to ridges in Virginia. They're dry and <laughs> um, yeah, there, it's a long way in between water sources. So I'm just gonna let it go and be happy that I'm here and that I had, I'm, or I should say, I'm going to get more rest. Um, 16 really, in all honesty, is my sweet spot. Um, I just, I feel, I don't feel completely wiped out when I'm done with 16 and I'm able, it seems pretty consistently that I'm able to get 18 miles in, but it's not every day that you just land at a campsite after 18 miles. So that's the kind of, that's the situation with tomorrow. Um, I have, a, I've looked at my app and I've got about three choices for tomorrow. A 15 mile day, uh, a 16 mile day on top of a mountain, but we're supposed to have more thunderstorms. And then an 18 mile day that apparently is frequented by bears. So I like to try and avoid those areas, but um, we'll see. Um, those are my options. We'll just see how the day progresses. Um, I had some good uh, human interaction today that actually helped me get out of my funk and um, get me back into my light shining brightly. It was a little dull there this morning. You know, not that anything was wrong or I was in a bad mood. It just kind of was a little, a little like melancholy. And you know, I just, you can't be up and happy every step of the way of this trail. It's a long time out here. So yeah, I, that's, that's where I was. But I feel like I'm back to my normal cheerful self and I'm about to make dinner and since I've been here early um, I've had enough time to kind of really research the trail ahead and I should be in Waynesboro the day after tomorrow um, that's where I'm getting my summer kit and I'm gonna have to mail that out and I think that I'm probably going to be doing a bit of running around with that um, and I just need a little time to like pack my stuff in the new pack and make sure everything's going to work with 4.75 days worth of food so I 
kind of think I'm going to have to take another zero. So that's where we're at. Um, I think that's it. So I'm going to let you go and I'll see you in the morning. Good night, everyone. I would also like to add that it is sticky and like things are just wet and damp and I'm wet and damp, um, but it's no big deal. Um, and it has just started to rain again, a little tiny bit. I don't think it's gonna be too big of a deal, though I do see a lot of gray sky out there. We'll see. There is a chance of it to do this until I think about eight o'clock. Figured I'd share with you a little bit of my dinner tonight. So I have got McDougal's rice noodle soup. This is one of the dinners that I made on my own. This is what I call pad thai with penne and broccoli. So it's just penne pasta that's been pre-cooked. Broccoli, uh, it's uh, freeze-dried broccoli and then powdered uh, peanut butter from a company called Outdoor Herbivore. And they claim that when they uh, turn the peanut butter into powder, they retain the fats. I don't know if that's possible or not, but that's what they say. It's actually pretty good. I then add olive oil and a packet of, uh, uh, I think it was chula hot sauce. Yep, chula hot sauce. So it tastes pretty much like pad thai. It's good.